Hey, it's Justin Moore from Trending Family, and here are this week's top five trending news that are influencing families. So GeekWire talked about a new common sense media survey called Social Media, Social Life, and it found that there were more positives than negatives to teen use of social media. Jim Steyer, who is the founder and CEO of Common Sense, said that many of the insights are likely to challenge some parents' notions of whether social media is good or bad for teens. In 2012, 34% of teens said that they use social media more than once a day. And in the 2018 survey, that number more than doubled to 70%. Also, smartphone ownership uh, by teens also went up a lot from 41% to 89% today. And, and Mike Robb, who is Common Sense's Senior Director of Research, said that it's the large number of positives that's likely to surprise most people. I mean, the data is showing that kids are far more likely to say that using social media makes them feel less lonely, uh, less depressed, Press, more confident and better about themselves. And that's really kind of counterintuitive given that, uh, you know, what most people's perceptions are uh, about social media. Yahoo Finance talked about how millennial men prefer to buy just about everything on Amazon. Condé Nast and Goldman Sachs released a report called the 2018 Top Brands and Retailers Millennials Love. And men rank Amazon as their favorite place to shop in almost every category. In fact, in every category surveyed, men chose Amazon as either their number one or number two retailer. And they talked about how just this general trend towards more online shopping is the largest shift in behavior. And that 22% of respondents said that they're doing more shopping online compared with 11% last year. And Heath Terry, who is an analyst at Goldman, said that Amazon's progress across apparel categories will mirror it mirror its steady press forward in every other category it has prioritized, like electronics, media, cloud computing. Um, and they're going to start small, leverage third parties, use scale to attract brands, and gradually grow the footprint until any brand not working with it loses access to one of the fastest growing pools of consumer spending. So Kid Screen talked about how Bondi America is bringing back Tamagotchi. I had a Tamagotchi growing up. Basically, all my friends did. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically this little keychain uh, computer virtual pet. And you could feed it, you could clean up after it, um, and you could even discipline it. Um, and if you can believe it, the original handheld Tamagotchi have sold more than 79 million units since they first hit the shelf in 1997. And it's, a, and it's a very interesting time because um, market research firm, the MPD Group, recently found that youth electronics was the fastest growing super category in the first half of 2018, with US sales rising 43% due to products like Fingerlings and Hatchimals. And so it's just a really an interesting story of another brand trying to use nostalgia to revitalize sales. So Chain Storage talked about Net Elixir's 2018 holiday forecast, which projects online sales to increase 15%. It's also projecting that Amazon will take 40% of online holiday sales this year. And according to Uday and Bose, who is the founder and CEO of Net Elixir, their models are forecasting a very optimistic holiday season for retailers and that they're seeing new buying trends being spurred by the adoption of new technologies. They also identified three peak online periods for this year's holiday shopping. So uh, November 22nd to the 26th, which is the five day period from Thanksgiving to Cyber Monday, um, the Green Monday period, which is December 9th to the 12th, and the mobile shopping spike, which is December 18th to uh, the 21st. So it's going to be interesting to see if these holiday sales materialize this year. And Kids Screen talked about how YouTube Kids is rolling out a section for tweens. So the app has previously been geared towards preschoolers, but this new mode is going to allow parents of eight to 12 year olds the ability to curate content. So whether that's, you know, the entire channel or even individual videos. So I think this move is in response to, you know, a lot of concerns that have been voiced by YouTube's advertisers over the last, you know, one to two years. Of course, they've experienced a lot of brand safety issues. Um, and so I think you're going to continue to see YouTube double down on these types of safeguards. Thank you.